This training video is brought to you by K-Alliance. K-Alliance provides high quality instructor led training videos for desktop, IT and soft skills. Visit us online at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching and we hope you learned something new. Real videos, real learning, real success. So now the time has come for us to install our primary site server. Uh, we've prepared the Active Directory by extending the schema and uh, creating the system management container. We've, we've also taken care of our prerequisites. So now it's uh, just a matter of running the setup routine and answering the appropriate questions. So let's go ahead and bring up the setup program. Now, this is run off of the product media, wherever we have that. And we've got a number of different options here to take a look at some standalone components. Like, for instance, if you just wanted to install the console on a computer so you could connect into an existing site system uh, without installing all the other components, we can get to some additional resources. But the main thing that we want to do is install. So let's go ahead and click install. And that will. Uh, begin the process. Now remember what we're trying to do here is install a primary site server as a standalone site, not as a part of a site hierarchy. So let's work through the wizard. So we can see right here the setup wizard. Before starting you should have a SQL Server installation available. We do. Obtain the name of the computer that's running Microsoft SQL Server. And we want to meet the minimum system requirements and, of course, review the release notes. So let's go ahead and click Next. Now, you can see right here our options. Install the Configuration Manager Primary Site. Or install a Configuration Manager Central Administration Site. Now, we have a couple of other options in here. We can recover an existing site if we feel like they're uh, has been corruption and we need to recover from a backup. Uh, we could do so here. We can upgrade an existing Config Manager uh, installation or uh, perform site maintenance, perhaps, or even uninstall a Config Manager site. Now, some of these are grayed out because these things don't exist, so they're not an option. Uh, but otherwise, we can install a Config Manager central administration site, or the option we want is a primary site. Now, if I check this box, I have the opportunity to install a uh, primary site. And these are going to be the typical installation options. Default installation path, local SQL server, local management point, local distribution point. All of these various different elements can be automatically configured for me. Now, I don't want to do that because I'm actually going to be pointing to a remote SQL server as opposed to configuring a local SQL server. So let's go ahead and click Next. And we'll go ahead and install as an evaluation and click Next. And of course, we always have to accept the license terms. Be sure to read those. Click Next. Now, prerequisite licenses. Because throughout the lifetime of Config Manager, we may, through the console from this primary site that we're about to install, we may push out SQL Express editions or SQL Server native clients, um, or even Microsoft Silverlight. Through normal operation, for instance, if we were to create, through the console, a secondary site, it doesn't give us the opportunity at the time to accept the license agreement when it installs SQL Express, which is what it will do for a secondary site. Um, so basically what we're saying is, in perpetuity now, as I do stuff through this system, um, I accept the license that these products, as they go out to various different endpoints, um, are, I, I've agreed to accept that license. Now, this is what we were speaking about earlier when we were talking about prerequisites. The setup requires prerequisite files. It can automatically download them to a location, or you can use files that have been downloaded previously. So use previously downloaded files. Now, I mentioned that you know, I had downloaded them already, so let's go ahead and click Browse. And they are in this folder called setup.dl that I created. Doesn't matter what it's called. 
Now again, if we download them, the system would have to have internet access in order to retrieve these elements. So let's go ahead and click Next. And it's just verifying that it has all of the downloaded, previously downloaded components that it thinks it should have. So it's just going through that very uh, verification process um, right now. And it looks like all of them have been found and verified. Now, what language? Select the server languages that Config Manager displays in the console and in reports. So if you have additional supported languages, you could check them here. We're just going to stick with English for now and click Next. Now, client languages. Uh, when you select a client language and it matches the display language for a client computer, the Config Manager client displays that language. So if you had additional clients and on their Windows machines they're running a MUI of some sort, multi-language user interface, these will load in with them and have the supported language. So you may want to enable some of those for your devices. Click Next. Now I have to specify a site code. And I'm just going to go ahead and say NYC. We'll, we'll assume that my home office is in New York City and I want the site code to be NYC. Now if my site is larger and expands a, a broader region than that, maybe North America, and I'll go ahead and say NAS for North America site, um, you know, whatever you feel is appropriate, three-digit code. It must be three digits and it cannot be duplicated. Um, I'm going to go back to specifying NYC, give it a site name such as New York City site, and then the installation folder. Where do we want to actually install the binaries for this particular program? And are we going to go ahead and also install the console on this system, or are we planning on just running the console off of different systems? Go ahead and click Next. Now, whenever you install a primary site, you have the opportunity to join an existing hierarchy. But this hierarchy must already exist. The correct order for deploying site hierarchy is to deploy the central administration site first, and then create primaries. If I choose right now to install the primary as a standalone, I cannot later join it into a hierarchy. It's not possible. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, but I'm making a very clear decision here that this is going to be a standalone forever. Go ahead and click Next. And that's what this warning is. It's a standalone. You can't do that without wiping it out and starting over. Do you want to continue? Yes, I do. Now, we have to get connected into a database. So we want to specify the database's server's fully qualified domain name. And it's on the database is actually running on a different system that I've called DC SQL. Now, for the instance name, every database can have multiple instances installed. It's as if they're totally separate uh, database servers, although happen to be running on the same computer. And so you have to connect into a specific one for a specific purpose. Now I'm just going to connect into the default, and as you can see, I can leave it blank for the default. The blank, uh, sorry, the default name is MS SQL Server. That's the default instance name. Now the database name, cm for config manager, underscore site. So your, your database will be named according to the site code that you chose. And we'll go ahead and take the default port numbers that it's giving us, and we'll go ahead and click Next. Now the SMS provider is used by Config Manager Console to communicate with the site database. So what is going to be the SMS provider? It's going to be on the same server where we're installing this site system. So we have a choice, but I'm going to put it on the same server here. Now, communication settings. Are we uh, uh, configuration server site system roles can accept HTTP or HTTPS? Specify whether to require all system roles to accept only HTTPS um, or as you can see right here, configure the communication method on each site system role. So clients will use HTTPS when they have a valid PKI certificate, uh, and the HTTPS enabled site roles are available. So we, we would need a PKI, that's a public key infrastructure, if we want to implement HTTPS 
uh, uh, communications. So we're basically saying, look, if, if on the server side it says to require it, then they will require it. In the meantime, um, you know, we, we, we are basically telling the clients that they can negotiate this and we'll leave it up to the site system servers themselves. Go ahead and click Next. And now we got to decide. Two of the most important roles besides the main site system server is a management point and a distribution point. And we have to determine, well, do we want to co-locate these roles on this same primary site system server or are we going to deploy them as a separate system? Now, I'll go ahead and install them here now. And remember, we can always change this later. We can add more management points and we can add more distribution points at a later time if we wanted to. Now, the client connection is on a per role basis. I'm going to choose HTTP for now, but we can always change it to HTTPS and the clients will require certificates in order to connect. Go ahead and click Next. Uh, I'm not going to bother to join the Customer Experience Improvement Program at the moment. And then click Next and then Setup will install Config Manager with the following settings. And as I click Next, it's going to start in down this long road, including initially a prerequisite check. Potential installation problems. If problems are found, Setup will display details about how to resolve them. So it's going through, it may give us some warnings, but ultimately it'll go through the prerequisite check. Uh, I'll resolve any prerequisite issues that may arise and we'll finish out the installation, which could take a fair amount of time. But that's the process. I'm going to come out the other end with a primary site server installed. We hope you enjoyed this preview video. Please click on the like button below if you did and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to visit us at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial today. You could learn a lot in a week.